The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not, any, did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And then after three days of be, after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was about when he was in the house, he asked them, "What are you arguing about along the way?" But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another, who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, "Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all." Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. We're living in trying times, and even as I say that, I feel like it has become such an overused cliche that it's hard not to just roll my eyes. Yes, we are living in trying times, and also, to be honest, we are very tired of it. We're tired of getting news about sickness and death and corruption and turmoil and outrage. We're tired of fires and floods. We're tired of feeling exhausted mentally and physically and tired of trying to put a good face on it all. And we are tired, oh, so tired of the coronavirus. And we are tired of getting news about yet another loss. Our senior warden wrote to me this week and said, did you not speak reverently to God about having, not having more problems? which made me laugh out loud. I may have run low on speaking with reverence, even to God. I know well the prayer, God, give me patience and give it to me now. But I also know well the prayer that we prayed today to begin our service, our collect for the day. We are anxious because we are, as humans, placed among things that are passing away. And so we ask God to, hold, to help us hold fast to those things that shall endure. Now granted, sometimes we are glad when something is over. We rejoice when a dark cloud yields a silver lining. One person may be relieved while another feels bereft because of change. But it is through change and loss that we develop resilience, individually and communally, and grow. But I remember, and maybe you do too, what were called growing pains that happened in my legs as a child, and that hurt. It woke me up at night and made me cry. The process of becoming resilient, learning to accept and even embrace change, growing, can hurt. People have been telling me lately that this community has had so much loss. For some, the losses started years ago and have continued. Dear friends are gone. The church used to be full. We used to have fun fellowship events that brought in great crowds and do lots of outreach downtown and beyond. The youth program was so big, we had to divide it into two groups. We used to be more vibrant. The budget has shrunk so much. For others, the losses are more recent. A lot of people left when this happened, or that happened, or when this person made a change, or that person retired and no one stepped up. 
to take their place. And this priest left. And now that priest left. And some people are upset and hurt while others are not. Our first responses to these things are almost always emotional, even as they're different for different people. For some, it's grief and trauma. For others, it's being freed of a burden. And maybe you wish I wouldn't talk about it. Let's not have unpleasantness, please. I know the feeling. But we cannot heal from the trauma of loss if we do not name it. We must make room for grief before we can see a new path. We are among things that are passing away, and things that pass away just don't come back. We can look back with fondness and say, wasn't that wonderful? Didn't we enjoy it? Didn't we have fun? Wasn't that meaningful? Don't I love this picture from that time? Don't I cherish this thing that I've kept all these years to remember? Nothing can take away from the joy in what was. But also, as we pray for God to soothe our anxieties, as we are placed among things that are passing away, just as the disciples were when they walked with Jesus, we also remember that we are a people of hope. We are an Easter people who know that after death comes resurrection and new life. We know that God makes things new, that we as a people can be made new through being God's people, striving to do God's will in a world that is full of trauma and also unspeakable beauty and sheer wondrousness. When we're anxious or even scared, we may be quick to try and hide our pain, suppress our feelings, react by saying we just have to move on. And by the way, could you hurry up and get us a new permanent rector so that we can stop being in this in-between place? But we are living in an in-between place. Remember that for everything there is a season and in this season, I encourage you to just feel your feelings right now. This community is in good hands with your staff and your vestry and your volunteer leaders. This community is in God's hands. It can withstand your grief. We will not linger here forever for so long that we cannot grow. But also, we cannot grow and learn what it is to thrive if we are dragging a bunch of baggage along behind us. Feel the feelings. And let the pain come into the light. We won't be overwhelmed by our feelings if we just go ahead and let them out. Soon you will be hearing about next steps in our continuing journey through the wilderness called the Interim Period. While there's a lot that's been going on more in the background up until now, your part in this process is coming soon. So this is a good time to keep praying this prayer. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about the things that are passing away so that we can hold fast to those things that shall endure. <clears throat> Grant us the eyes to see the new creation you want to make us into, to look for new life. <clears throat> Help us remember that we are a resurrection people, full of hope, even in the midst of loss and sadness. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat>